Back to the Bobby Starbucks Show, Coca-Cola Broadcasting. We're, we're now joined by ESPN guru, Sports Center anchor Neil Everett from Venice Beach, California. Neil went from the beaches of Hawaii to the beaches of Southern California. Not a bad gig. How you doing, Neil? I'm doing good. Don't forget the beaches of the East Coast too. We had we had to do nine years there. So nine hey, years in Bristol. To, it's it's great to see you, and it's good to see that you. That you got a show up and going because the folks who are listening on the other on the other end, I want you to know that Bobby Starbucks will uh, he will beat it down. He will find it and he will talk about it. He's one of the most talented cats I've ever had the pleasure of working with. We worked in Hawaii for a number of years, and he's a great storyteller. He's a huge sports fan. He's a lover of people and animals, and I think you're going to enjoy this program. Stick with it. I hope the check cleared that I sent you yesterday. Uh, no, Neil, I tell you, that means a lot to me. I, I was watching you last night on Sports Center, and it, it occurred to me, you deliver the hockey highlights, the NHL highlights, like you were born in Montreal. At, at what point did that happen? Well, I'll tell you what, it, it, I enjoy doing the hockey because it's the sport that I know the least about. I couldn't last for five seconds on a pair of skates standing up. I'm certainly not tough enough to play the sport. But I think what happened is, you know, the, the fact that I that I usually do the hockey with Barry Melrose and, you know, and he's an old time hockey guy. And so I, I really put a lot of effort into the hockey because I, I, I don't want to uh, disappoint him. And so uh, just through uh, repetition and all that, I, I guess I've, I've I've come to better understand it and hopefully I deliver it better. Hey, Neil, can you click your, your video on your end for the Skype? Let's see here. What's, uh, oh, that's not what I want. It's like a video icon. Video icon. Let me get my, uh, engineer. Oh, how about that? There. I think we're there. Does that work? We're thinking. Looks like something's happening. Mount Everett. All right. Welcome to the Valley. You know, there I'll tell you go. something. No, I'm serious. I was listening to your call, call the uh, hockey last night. I'm thinking, at what point did you, you know, become so polished because, in your DNA, you're a basketball guy. Your your father was a coach. You had a relationship with Pete Newell and John Wooden. So, my what I want to ask you is this: Can anybody stop Steph Curry? Have you ever seen anything like Steph Curry? And is he going to win ten in a row? I don't even think PK Subban could stop Steph Curry. So there, as we transition from hockey to basketball, uh, you know what? He's really a, uh, he's really an anomaly. Uh, it was interesting because on, um, and I, I don't know when this is going to run, but but today on this Friday, uh, I was reading something about Isaiah Thomas, and and he said, you know, Steph Curry would not be would not be having the success he's ha- he's having against the defenses of uh, Isaiah Thomas's years, and I had said that exact same thing last night. Uh, as physical as Isaiah Thomas and John Stockton and guys like that got. I, I don't think Steph Curry would be as effective, but the game is more wide open now, and uh, and the game's evolved in that in that way. And so, he, listen, he's a pleasure to watch. But I guess you know, and I, I'm not trying to rain on Steph Curry by saying I don't think he'd be as effective. Listen, I'm sure he'd be a little stronger and and would bulk up, and, and he'd probably prove me wrong. But yeah, he's he's really fun to watch, uh, Bobby. We got uh, we uh, we got to go up last year to the NBA Finals and the Western Conference Finals in Oakland. Uh, Stan and I, and and see him up close and personal, and then we've done a you know a television commercial or two with him. Curry chicken, so he, yeah, curry chicken in the calf. I mean, we're eating so much curry chicken in the calf. I, you know, it's like, oh man, I almost want the guy to have a bad night just so we can get something different on the menu. You know, I remember when he was playing for Davidson in, in the uh, NCA tournament. People they they couldn't believe what they were seeing. But he has translated that into the NBA, and this wasn't a jump shooter league. I mean, if you think about it, in the 60s, the Celtics ran the table. In the 80s, there were a lot of loaded teams. You had Julius and the Sixers and Magic and the Lakers, Bird and the Celtics, Moses. It just went on and on. Now, who can beat these guys? Well, you know, listen, you've you've always got to watch out for an injury. Um. So there's there's always that dynamic, and, and the thing about Golden State, they have a bad shooting night from the outside. I mean, they are so reliant upon the three point shot that if they have a, if they have a bad night from the outside, they're going to lose the game. But to beat them four out of seven when they when they when they've won 
52 out of 57 right now, uh, that seems like a tough task. So uh, it'll be interesting. Listen, the NBA playoffs, it always goes up another notch. And uh, so it'll be interesting to see um, see how that works out. Uh, it's, it's, it's an exciting it's an exciting time. And listen, the NBA, when it when it's on, it's 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 a good watch. That's for sure. How long will Kobe Bryant's 12 threes last? That record. That's going to be going by the boards maybe tonight. Isn't it Kobe Bryant and Danielle Marshall? Yeah, I saw that last that? night. I didn't say Danielle Marshall. Crazy? I didn't want to cack it. But, yeah, there's two that have 12. Isn't that, isn't that, isn't that crazy? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised that Curry hasn't hit that yet. And uh, I think Clay Thompson owns it for one quarter, and I think Chandler Parsons owns it for one half. Um, but Curry just, I mean, boy, you know, the thing that's overlooked, Bobby, is that He's such a great ball handler. And, uh, you know, everybody talks about his shooting and all that, but he's become such a great ball handler. And I remember you said about Davidson. I remember the first time I ever saw him. I was in the Las Vegas airport. I'd gone there to go to a library convention. And uh, I was, and the NCAA tournament was on, and, I, and Gonzaga was playing Davidson. Gonzaga was I'd never even heard of Davidson I'd gone to school with a guy named Tom Davidson but other than that I'd never even heard of him and uh and so I'm sitting in the uh, uh, the Las Vegas airport looking at this TV and I'm like who is this who is this this kid that looks like he couldn't even grow you know pe- he looked like peach fuzz on his face and I think he hit 40 against Gonzaga and knocked him out of the tournament that day yes yeah. so he That's did. how I first remember Steph Curry. But, yeah, it's, it sure is enjoyable, and it's it's one of those rare times in sports where you're going to remember, like, oh, I was, you know, I was watching a lot of sports back when Steph Curry came onto the scene. So it'll be kind of neat to talk about when we're old and gray, which I guess we already are, right, Bobby? Yeah, that's, uh, you know, two words have never been spoken. But when you see Steph Curry, you're like, he looks like a guy that would be parking your car at the hotel, taking your bags to your room, not a cold-blooded assassin on the hardwood. It just blows me away. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And I'll tell you what, you if you if you look at his history and you see some of the old commercials and things that he did with his dad, it's, I guess it's not a surprise that he's as, as effective as he is. Yes, I started, I uh, was lucky to be here and spent time with his father and uh, around the basketball and learned and shoot peer shooter. What I, what I don't believe is that he couldn't even get a scholarship to his father's uh, school. I mean, they've got to be ruining the day they didn't say, listen, we want you. Davidson said yeah. yes, and he basically put Davidson on the map. Yeah, he did. You know, listen, he was a late bloomer, and uh, he's bloomed well. So, you know, I mean, listen, you look at Clay Thompson. He ended up at Wazoo. Okay, no offense against Washington State. I grew up in Spokane. I love Cougar Gold Cheese. But if you're a basketball prospect, you're not. Washington State isn't the first place you're picking. So I don't know Clay Thompson's history, but I'm guessing, hey, a lot of people didn't offer him, you know. And he, another guy that's developed late, developed a jump shot. And now you got one of the best backcourts maybe in the history of the NBA. Yeah, and now the Golden State Warriors have Ruth and Gary playing with sneakers. Yeah. You know, you talked about curry chicken. What I mean. Having a job at ESPN, being a sports center anchor, a lot of frills, a lot of fun things, I bet, every day. But making the commercials, that's got to be your best thing. I mean, Roger Federer carrying Ben Roethlisberger out of a burning building. Talk about the spots. Do you write them? Do they bring them to no. you? No, they, we don't write them. They get brought to us. I'll tell you what, I just did one with Antonio Brown from the Steelers. Oh, nice. And it's going to be a classic. You can't tell yeah, us, though. I, I, think, I think it's going to be a classic. Well, no, I don't mind telling you. Uh, <coughs> I didn't sign a confidentiality agreement. I don't know if it's my last one. Then we'll know I wasn't supposed to say anything. Um, no, he is. He's the receptionist at the de- at the front desk. Apropos, and he keep, and he keeps picking up the phone and and answering. And then he looks at me and he goes, "That's my ninth reception." And I'm like, "You mean phone call?" And he goes, "No reception." And he goes, "Yesterday I had 109 receptions." Nice. And I'm like. You mean phone calls? And he goes, I'm fixing to set the reception record. And I'm like, what re- What record? They're phone calls. And then the phone rings, and he gets another one. Then he mouths, he looks at me, and he mouths. And he's got this, he like, that's his, like, now he's, before he had eight, now he has nine. I love and it. And this kid, I'm telling you, he's got a smile. He should be selling toothpaste. 
That's he's got, you know, he's got a smile like he's got a smile like Desmond Howard. Just, I mean, just pretty teeth and a and just a big smile. And he was so engaging and so fun to work with. So that one should be coming out um, sometime uh, when the NFL season starts. And I, I think folks are going to like that one. It was it was a it was a lot of fun to shoot. And those are those are a lot of fun to shoot. We shot the one with Gronkowski not too long ago, and that was pretty good. And the uh, the one with Kevin Love that we shot was was good. But then when a guy gets traded, like Kevin Love did, then you can't run that commercial anymore. I see. You know, uh, what about uh, your days in Bristol? When you first came to ESPN, ESPN News, the sets looked like something that we have at CBC Studio B. Now, the sets you have at LA Live, you guys could run the Oscars there. We're talking, this is big time television. Well, yeah, we're the worldwide leader in sports. So you got <laughs> to be the worldwide leader in sets. Too. Hey. Yeah, it's been a natural progression of. Uh, you know, listen, Disney, which owns ESPN and ABC, does a nice job and and, and takes care of uh, takes care of us. So it's a it's a great gig, and uh, you know, it's a it's a it's a nice setup they have. It's it's beyond me. You know, I just go and they just put a microphone on me and I start yakking, but it sure looks pretty. Well, you're you're an analog guy. You're you're not a text me guy. You're not a Facebook guy. You're neat. No, no the fact that the fact that I'm on Skype with you right now is only because my wife. Is uh, is a lot smarter than me and can help me set this up. Oh, that's great! Hey, lastly, Neil, how great was that last night to stand in front of that giant screen with that sixty foot wave? The oh. hair on your neck should have been standing up. Oh, I'm telling you, man, I had chicken skin. It was nice to be able to uh, pay homage to Hawaii, Eddie Aikau, Brock Little, uh, all the men who, uh, who who and women who 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 hit the waves. Um, I just wish, you know, we had more time. I could do, I could do five minutes on that. And I, I had 30 seconds, but having it on that big, that big screen, they don't have a big screen. They don't have that big a screen in Bristol. We have the biggest screen at ESPN at our LA office. I, I hear you but have that, a, I hear you I have a pretty big pretty screen cool. at your house. Well, yeah, but not, not that big. Not, <laughs> not that big. <laughs> not that big. That's a big screen, man. Mount Everett, Neil Everett, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Best of luck to you. Continued success. Bobby Starbucks, I'm here for you anytime, brother. I love you. All right, man. Aloha. Aloha. Just call me Bobby Starbucks. I may be bruised, but I ain't beat.